Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows 2000 Build 2091 in VirtualBox. Now this is a part of the uh, Release Candidate 1 or RC1 uh, series of the Windows NT 5.0 slash Windows 2000 Beta uh, series of operating systems. Um, which it was released on August 4th, 1999, which that day will come in handy um, later on in this video. Um, so we'll need that date for us to have it installed properly there. Um, and this will also be my first tutorial using VirtualVox version 7.0, which actually has implemented a new feature um, that is called unattended install, um, which is basically the VirtualVox equivalent to VMware's version of uh, easy install. Um, which I will actually be using in this video um, because upon doing some testing, um, trying to do a manual install and doing guest editions with it, it actually does blue screen upon uh, trying to manually install guest editions. So it does work when you do install the operating system manually without the unattended access. However, um, it does do that blue screen there if you try to install guest editions. So you can do manual if you want, you just, if you do guest editions, it's got a blue screen and the only way to work around that uh, to get the machine working again is to boot it in safe mode and remove uh, guest editions. So uh, without further ado, we're going to get straight into this video and uh, this will be again the first one we've done with a uh, VirtualBox 7.0 and doing the unintended uh, install. Um, so the only links that you'll need here um, that will be in the description, there'll be a link of course to uh, VirtualBox. You can see the VirtualBox 7.0 um, platform here is going to be uh, down here for you to install the 7.0 expansion or uh, extension packs here too. Uh, if you do want to use VirtualBox 6.1, any of the builds there, you can still go in there. Um, as you can see um, upon their website here, it does say it will remain supported until December of 2023. So it will still be a little over a year uh, for support there. And then there will also be a link in the description for the ISO for Windows 2000 build 2091. Um, there are a couple of mirrors here off the WinWorld website that you can use to download it there. Um, so those are the only two things you need in the description uh, that will be there for you um, if you do need either one of those. Um, once you have those, uh, you know, the ISO and if you um, are installing VirtualBox and have that in there. Um, go ahead and open up VirtualBox, and what we'll do is we'll create a new virtual machine. And you can see, um, for any of you that have not used the new version of VirtualBox, is this uh, the creating machine step looks a little different. Um, it does still give us the opportunity to put in the name, uh, the folder it's going to, and then the version, but it actually gives us the ability to insert an ISO image right off the start. Um, which I think is very, very handy to have if you, especially, you know, to do it, uh, for the unattended installation. So, um, basically to start off here, you know, we'll just go ahead and name our machine. I'm just going to call mine windows 2000 build 2091. Um, and then it should automatically restore, um, or store the machine into the default folder that it has for, um, where your machines already are stored to. You can change it if you want. And then it should uh, automatically set the version to Windows 2000. You can go ahead and manually change it if it doesn't for any reason. Um, and then here we are actually gonna insert the ISO image. So if you do the drop down and hit other, it should open up your Explorer window and then just locate wherever you save the um, ISO file for the uh, 2000-2091 ISO. I'm going to insert that in here and you can see that detected OS type Windows 2000 and that it can be uninstalled unattendedly. Um, so that's the unattended uh, installation here that I was talking about and say this will start uh, after this wizard is closed. So basically what it does is once you fill out the rest of the uh, information here that it needs, it will uh, go ahead and automatically start your virtual machine and go through the setup by itself um, after going through this wizard. You can skip the unattended installation um, and do it manually here if you wish. But for this, we are going to be doing the unattended installation. So we're gonna leave that unchecked. We're gonna hit next. And then it's actually gonna come up with the guest OS install setup here. Uh, so um, it's gonna ask you to enter in a username and it also is gonna 
put a password here, which is just by default, it's change me. If you hit the uh, view button here, um, you do have to have a password in there. I don't think upon testing so far, I have seen where it's actually set a password to change me, or even if you put a custom one in there, um, but I just be aware of what you have that set to just in case if it does. Um, it also does have you get, uh, the ability to put in the product key here too, if it needs it. This version of uh, Windows 2000, um, this build here does not require a product key, so we will just leave it all blank there. Um, and then for the host name, this is basically what you're gonna name the PC itself. This is a PC name. So I'm just gonna call it, uh, not NT5, but uh, Win2000, and then I'm gonna put a dash 2091. Um, and then also for domain name, we're just gonna put all caps work group. Um, it normally puts that default domain in there, but we're gonna just keep that as is. And then to have guest editions installed automatically, make sure you check this guest editions box and it should automatically have the path for your guest editions ISO. Um, if not, make sure you locate that. Um, and if for any reason you need to download that by extension pack or whatever, make sure that is there, but should automatically locate that guest editions ISO. And then you can also check the box here to install it in the background. So basically what it'll do is it will power on the machine, but it won't display it up on the screen um, in a new window and it'll just do it in the background. So I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, we hit next. Um, it'll go ahead and ask us how much RAM we want to dedicate. The recommended here it has it already at is 168 megabytes, which is going to be just fine there. So leave it at that. And then we can just leave it at one CPU. You can actually up the CPU counter. Um, this is for cores um, not actual processors i know it says processors in cpu and you know if you hover over it it says number of virtual cpus but this is really to me i think it's more for cores than it is actual cpu um, themselves so once that's uh, set just hit next and then it's going to have us create our virtual hard disk recommended size here is four gigs so we'll leave it at that that's plenty for the uh, install here and then there's also a box here if you want there is a box that says pre-allocate full size and then uh, so basically, it's just kind of the short version now of the prompt that came up during the setup of um, the dynamically allocated versus fixed size. So basically, if you check this, it's going to automatically allocate that entire four gigs. Whereas if you have it unchecked, that's basically the, uh, if you want to put quotes, dynamically allocated, which it's going to basically just take it up as much as it's using um, without actually using all four gigs. Um, and I think automatically it's going to create it as a VDI. Um, it does not give you the option, it looks like, to change the file type. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, once that's all finished, go ahead and hit next. And that's going to confirm your uh, configuration here. It's got a summary uh, page now. Um, it does not let you go in and make the changes, um, it, but you can go back through the setup and make the changes, but you can't do it in this window. So if there's any changes maybe you made a mistake of or going into the uh, um, setup here, um, make them as needed, but once you have everything set up, just hit finish. And as you can see, it'll create the machine um, and it will go ahead and automatically power it up. Now, as said, it's gonna run it in the background. So if you wanna open it, just do uh, double click it and it'll open the machine up. And you can see it's automatically starting up the setup um, and it will try and run as much as it as possible by itself. But as you can see, um, when it comes up to a part of the setup that it normally doesn't come up to, you know, with running through an easy install. I did this with Windows XP testing this out and it went through everything by itself. Um, whereas this, if it traditionally doesn't see a window like this, you do need to do some manual parts of this. So basically just hit C to continue, then it will continue doing it by itself. Um, as an example there. So um, right now it's on the portion of formatting the drive. It's gonna examine the disk and then copy the files. Um, so it'll do that here. And then to actually get the mouse to move around here too, just an FYI, if you go to, to input and click mouse integration, then you can click in and it'll let you move in the mouse. Otherwise it will not work. So it's gonna ask us to go ahead and do a reboot. So we'll hit enter to reboot and it will bring us up um, booting into the operating system and um, the graphical part of the setup. So just let it boot up and do its thing here. And it should bring us up into the graphical part of the setup. And as you can see, the mouse does move because we had turned mouse integration off. Um, so it is installing devices, which again, 
all of this is being done on its own. Um, I haven't clicked anything here in the graphical part yet. Um, but there may be times here in this graphical part where it does come up and actually have you do some manual entering because of some either incorrect information or it's a window that the unattended install just doesn't recognize. Um, so just let it run through on the installing devices. Shouldn't take too long for it to run through. Um, but once that's completed, it will bring us up on the next page. So um, since it will take just a little bit here, um, I'll go ahead and let it run through the install devices screen and I'll come to you guys once it's uh, proceeded to finish this and go to the next screen there. Okay, as you can see there, it will automatically uh, continue through this setup here. So it just automatically goes into the um, installing of networking components and it will finish through here on that now. Um, and it will just continue to automatically go through the setup. You can see it is now copying files. Um, and it will just continue to go through everything. So really the only thing we've manually done here is when that, um, I think it was that, it was like a startup uh, drive or disk uh, message that came up in the uh, original uh, portion there on the blue screen part of the setup. We just hit C and from here, it's done everything by itself. So it's now going through the final task of installing uh, start menu items, registering components, save settings, and uh, removing any temporary files used. So once it completes through this uh, part of the setup, it will go ahead and um, do another reboot here. So we should see that here fairly soon after it has completed going through the portions of the setup. So um, this is something uh, that makes installing operating systems in VirtualBox a lot easier. And so I think that's a great implementation that they have uh, put into VirtualBox as doing a um, unattended install installation or as VMware calls it, easy install. Um, makes it a lot easier and user friendly there for um, new VirtualBox users. So now uh, this message will come up. It says that it's an evaluation copy of Windows 2000 and to verify that the computer's date and time settings are correct. So if we hit OK, um, it will prompt us up with a date and time property window here. And as said, um, with that date that I had brought in mind earlier for the release date of it, um, August 8th or August 4th, excuse me, uh, 1999. So if you make sure you have the month at August, the year at 1999 and go down to click on number four here, that will set the date to August 4th, 1999. So go ahead and apply that. Um, you can change your time zone if you need to. Um, hit OK, and it will finish through and prompt us to reboot. So go ahead and do restart now, and it will go ahead and restart the machine. And we'll say starting Windows. It'll start up here, and then it should bring us up to the um, login here. And I think there'll be one final prompt that comes up about logging in to the account. Um, so it'll say preparing network connections, and then that other window should eventually pop up here. Um, or actually it's going to log in, um, or it's going to, you know, do the login sound. So you can see we do have audio working, which is good. Um, it'll come up with a command line window and it will prompt us into the desktop. So, um, I think that was more of a other setting here that goes on, but as you can see, we now have 256 colors that can be enabled. Um, it doesn't do it by default, but just if you want to enable 256 colors, um, just right click on the desktop and hit properties, go to settings, make sure 256 colors is set. You can up the resolution a little bit if you want, apply it and hit okay. And you can see it's increased the resolution and we now have 256 colors. Um, so that is good to see. So that means we have 256 colors and we have audio. So we should be able to get the full benefit of using this beta version of Windows 2000. And if you do a right click on my computer and hit properties, you can also see that the uh, system information shows that it is um, set to uh, the build here. The build is showing as version 5.0, uh, 2091. So indicating the correct build number here um, and also doing it in Winver. You can see build 2091. So with that being said, that is the uh, video tutorial on how to install Windows 2000 build 2091 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching. If this did help you out in any way, or if you did like this video, enjoyed watching the video here at all, 
Uh, you could leave a like here down below. Um, if you have any ideas for any future videos or any um, anything you'd like to leave in the comments, you can leave in the comments down below. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, um, you can hit the subscribe button down below. You can hit the bell as well to be notified of when I upload and keep up to date on uh, my content. So again, this is the video tutorial on how to install Windows 2000 Build 2091 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.